awesome dude what's the what's the green shirt man uh it says i pity the fool speaking of mortgage it's uh yeah. principal interest tax and uh what's insurance. the last one insurance principal yeah 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 principal interest tax insurance there you go i pity the fool that's so good dude it's uh it's a real throwback to the uh the, the, original, team. the original a team yeah that's funny man that's very funny Let's see who we got on. As you're joining us, just let us know what city and state you're from and whether or not you're using Chime, since we're going to be using Chime as the example here for, for building this amazing smart plan process for your past clients. Randy, where are you located, buddy? I'm here in the Dirty Dirty, Atlanta. Is that what it's referred to, the Dirty Dirty? I mean, if you know, you know. Okay. Dude, now you're in the... Now you're just throwing phrases at me. I'm just going to start giving a bunch of acronyms. You already threw in I pity the fool. So Yeah. Hey, we, that was a hot start. That was a hot start. Hot start. Hot start for some hot food, man. For some hot food. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're live into the Facebook community as well. Let's let's just dive right into it, man. Past clients is, is what really... For us at, on our team here locally in LA and Ventura County, that's what brings in our most business. It's referrals, and those mm -hmm. referrals are split up from our past clients, our sphere, mm -hmm. and then and then online leads, sure. right? And then and then everything else, a little bit of everything else that we have. Yeah, well, no, we, I'm glad I'm glad to hear you say that because, and maybe I have a, a jaded exposure to the to the real estate community. Just because of, you know, I've been at Chime for a few years before that. I was at another uh, lead gen, you know, CRM type company. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, I've, I've had, you know, dozens, hundreds of conversations. And a large percentage of them have started with, I only work with referrals and past clients in my sphere of influence. So I don't need a CRM. Or oh. I don't need, you know, drip campaigns or things like that. You know, yeah. it's. I don't know where I don't know where that mentality came from, but it is a really harmful mentality to your business. I think it's it's just that there's there's a clash between. So when I started in real estate, there mm. was no. I mean, the only CRM that was available was Top Producer, and I had to download it onto my desktop <laughs> wasn't even a web application it wasn't and i was that's like, amazing i was like what is this dude and and then it all changed right it all started growing then we started seeing other things like like tiger lead jump in there which you're familiar with right mm -hmm. and then yeah, it started yeah. growing so i think you have the old school mentality with thank goodness a lot more people are jumping into CRMs, but it's a, it's a surprise always to find that not a lot of people have them. And the main reason is just so that you know who you're going to call next and you have all that information in there. And now you can automate some of that so that you show up. So you show up when you're not really there and it prompts you and says, Hey, this person responded. It's time for you to reach out to them since they responded. So Dude, there's a lot of great things about it, and and I love I love a CRM, especially here. So I'm just gonna go right into it, dude. Let's do it. Let me just show you one thing, Chime, and then I'm gonna show you the drips. So mm. if you're paying attention, you're gonna want these drips, and then we're gonna show you how it works all together here. So this is the back end of our Chime. So far, I've gotten five leads today, which is a slow day. Damn it! Come on now. Man, that's slow. See, All right. Th Thursdays, people are out at happy hour already. I don't even know what the hell they're doing. All right. Here on the main dashboard, you have some choices. And my favorite one, one of my favorite ones, is this one, smart plan emails. So as I click here, you see add more smart plans to your leads, add more smart plans or adjust existing plans. Let's take a look at that one. And now you can tell here, this is probably my favorite feature off of any CRM because 
as you go here, look what happens on the right. Mm -hmm. Those pop up there, right? And Try then to suggest what you should have. Yeah. That, dude, to me, that rocks because after closing, right? This is what it even says here referral repeat business, right? After closing, this should be where your past clients are. Mm -hmm. So now let's say we click on it. I just clicked on it, it expanded. Now we're going to go on the right and say, well, buyer lead after closing, buyer lead. Closing anniversary, seller lead after closing. Well, let's go with that one. I just clicked on buyer lead after closing. And now it takes me through and it's like, this is exactly what it looks like, right? Mm -hmm. One day, well, here's the auto email, wait a day. Auto email, wait three wait days. Day. And then it keeps going. And then it sends out a, a funny one that says, how's life? <laughs> which I would suggest that you probably make more personalized. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, is if, if you are ever satisfied with just the templates in any platform, you are well, kind of lazy. Uh, Very lazy, man. Very lazy. You Like, you should take the templates as a base layer and then add your personality into it because especially in this circumstance, these people know yeah. you. They worked with you on their biggest purchase of their entire life, most likely, right? So they know your personality and they're gonna know if you send them some shit template, right? Oh, dude, so, 100%, man. Put your personality uh, in there. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I think it, I think that's where you start connecting with people. And that's what I love. Even with the auto texts, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the key too. And then once you're once you're done, you can import and then once you import, then you can start tweaking them, right? And that's, this to me, dude, is the key right here. And, and I mean, I wanna get into AI right after cause I love AI. So stay tuned for that towards the end. But here you see, you have the plan name, you can change it, right? Is it your plan or is it a team plan that everyone on the team can use, right? And I would say, turn that on as a team plan because it'll help out everybody else. And then, Here's a feature that not a lot of other CRMs have, which we use, but auto pause a plan, right? Auto pause when the lead responds. So in some cases, I do want the lead to stop getting these texts, right? If they're more like just, it's an automated sequence, for example, when the lead comes through on an online source, if I've already contacted them because they responded, you want it to shut off, right? In this case, you probably want the one I'm gonna show you next not to shut off and to keep it on because I designed it that way. And look, it, it can get really complicated here in a good way because look, as the source of the lead changes, you can add another process. Now it keeps going and you can say, hey, well, maybe I'll switch this around, put a different timing to it. But do you see the customization to all this? I love this, dude. This is what makes it super powerful. Right, because now I can go to the last one. How's life? Mm, maybe I'll change it up to something different, right? Something more personal. Mm -hmm. And then I can change up the bottom here. Uh, but I, I love this. What do you, do you want to add anything on this section? Yeah, no, I would just I would click on uh, application conditions. Okay. Uh, just click edit on the right hand side. Oh, there it is. Yep. And let, and, and just kind of demonstrate that all of the different ways smart plans can be applied, right? So not everyone may uh, segment their database the same way, mm. right? So like maybe you don't wanna start this under the pipeline stage closed, but if you wanted to use a tag, you could initiate the smart plan. Um, yeah, so you could use whatever tag you wanted, like maybe, you know, past client or something to that effect, but. Yeah, and look, you could, but here's here's the key. I'm gonna show you a drip. So you, you guys can put it wherever you want. I suggest you have something like this though, because as soon as whenever lead meets the specified condition, that means I'm gonna add the past client tag here, right? Mm -hmm. Then the sequence starts. That's all I had to do. Like go to, I would go to my leads. I'm gonna just close that out. I'm gonna to go to, let's uh, let's take a look at all of our leads. I'm gonna take a look at all of our leads here and let's say it's, it's Jasmine. Jasmine just came through, right? But let's say I'm done with her 
and I change up the tag for Jasmine, then all of a sudden, guess what happens? It starts that process automatically. I don't have to do anything. That's it. I just change it to past client. And so that's that's one of my favorite features of all. And I mean, some of you probably saw it. We also get seller leads there. We've contacted him, okay? We've or contacted is him. Is he ready to sell? What's his not, deal? Not yet, dude. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You'll get him though. I know you will. We, we might. We might. That sounds... All right. So let me zoom out of here so I can show you. Uh, actually, I want to ask you a question in regards to that. How do you typically see people use that process to, to really benefit their business more when it comes to the automation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I would say that there's, there's probably, again, this is going to change depending on how you run your business, but do you speak to seller past clients the same way you speak to buyer past clients just out of curiosity like if there's a different conversation there mm -hmm. then, you, then you definitely want to move both of them to you know the closed pipeline stage but maybe you create a tag that says you know past client buyer past client seller and you can apply as many tags as you want you can have as many smart plans active on a uh, you know, lead as you want or a contact record as you want. So there's really a lot of flexibility that lets you run uh, Chime the way you want to run your business. Like one of the things I think is so strange is when someone comes to us and says like, now tell me how to run my business. No, uh, I'm not going to tell you how to run your business. You, you, determine how you want your business run and the technology will conform to the way you want it to, uh, to operate. Like that's the beauty of Chime is that it's flexible and robust enough that it, it gives you the ability to, um, you know, customize it in such a way that you aren't constrained by the uh, resources from the CRM. So All you right. can run it however you want. All right. Makes sense. All right. Let me continue then on chime here. All right. So we're going to go back to Jasmine. Let's just say Jasmine is a past client, right? Mm -hmm. I would add right here, right? A tag. You could type in, you can start, start typing in and then you see how they pop up right there. Mm -hmm. So whatever you want to add there in this case, I would add a past client one, but I won't do it here because then it'll start it. Right. So what we want to do is click there and then I, it would take him to this. And this is where this is where we we've outlined this process that I, let me and you know what? Let me grab this because I'm just going to share it with everybody here so they can follow along. And let me drop it into the chat and let me know, everybody, as I drop this into the chat, if you can open it. OK. Do that and I'll click on it and see how it goes. All right, let me know if you can do that. Now, here's here's the reasoning behind this because a lot of the times we don't follow up in a year process, and we lose the client. But you're like, well, they're Tristan. They're not going to buy within a year. It's not about that. It's about cementing who you are in that process after showing that you care, that you're still there for them, even though the transaction is gone. One of the biggest challenges that most agents have is as soon as it closes there's like a breakup like all of a sudden you don't you've been talking to this agent almost daily and then they disappear right? <laughs> that's so true and and that's that's hurtful for your business so there's got to be a consistent process of remaining in their lives and so this is why we created this we've outlined it here got it john Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. And anybody else who's opening it, let me know that it's opened too. As sometimes we get, a, oh, I can't open it. So here's the outline. I typically take some time to outline things this way. So I know how, how many days we space them out. And so I can visually see what we're doing, a text, a call, what, what are we doing, right? And you can see here, you can alternate certain things. If you don't want to drop a voicemail, which by the way, nobody listens to, you can change it to a text or you can change it to an email or a video email, right? But the point is you're doing something and now we get into the details here. So here, 
here's where we start off day one. I, I leave a voicemail and typically, Randy, I'm not going to add somebody to my past client drip if we've if for any reason we've done a terrible job. And here I'm gonna go zoom out here to, to talk sure. to you. That's fair. If you and I just finished transacting. I, I typically ask you a simple question for two reasons. Number one, I want to know if I can ask you for reviews. And number two is I want to know if I can place you on our automated past client drip, right? And so my question is, is really easy. I'd be like, hey, Randy, thanks for thanks for transacting. Thanks for doing this with us. Thanks for trusting us, all that good stuff. Be like, Randy, how do we do, man? Because we're always looking to, to improve. That's it. I yep. shut up and listen. And then you're going to tell me, well, you're going to think about it and you're going to be like, well, you know, you could have done better over here or, you know, it, it was great or, uh, right. And then I, I look for that because if they say, Tristan, you guys did awesome. You did this and this and this, and it was amazing. Well, guess what I'm going to say right after I'm going to say, Hey, I've got this link. I'm going to send you to review us on Google. And no, I don't send them to Zillow first. We just switched that. That's good. Google Glad first. Person. And I say, uh, you just do me a favor because we get a lot of our business from reviews. Can you can you just write that in there? Check for hard well. And and um, and we leave it at that. And then now I know to place them on a past client. Here. Because look, let's go to our past client one. Yep. I got to pull it up. And you see the top. Congratulations. I know I've said it before, but it was great working with you. That's the voicemail that I drop, or in some cases I text this, right? Depending on what we want to do. And then if if we're dropping a voicemail, right? If we're using the service that you guys have to drop the voicemail, right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna follow up with a quick text and saying, "Hey, hey, Randy, happy face." Of course, I use little emojis, and I, I just left you a voicemail. Congrats again. Have have a great and fun day. And then ten days later, an email. Again, very authentic, very pertinent to real estate. Uh, it's been a few days since you bought your home and I hope you've had some time to mentally relax. Not sure if, if you're into real estate specific news, but I wanted to share this and it's a, a link to Housing Wire just to give them another option to stay in the know for, for housing information. And then a text, hey, do you wanna buy another house? But this is my, <laughs> this is my humor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. This doesn't fly with everybody. Like some people will be like, are you joking me? I would never say that. But Randy, yep. Randy knows I would totally say this. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, that is a great example of why you shouldn't just copy and paste templates. Especially and mine. Just use them, <laughs> as, use them as prompts. And one thing I want to point out too about something I've noticed with Tristan is obviously his team experienced a great deal of success they've converted online leads as well if not better than anybody else in the industry and so we'll have these offline conversations where i'm asking him like hey tristan in this scenario or with this type of lead or this type of lead and so many times nine out of ten times to me ask them what they want and i shut up and listen like tristan's team is the master of shutting up and listening and if you take nothing away from past client follow-up from this webinar, take away the strategy that shutting up and listening will take you further in business than anything else. Dude, that, even with past clients, this is yeah. giving the opportunity. Really good point. Really good point, Randy. Hey, man, I'm just, I'm just listening to you. I listen to a lot of you. Your, your, your voice is constantly throughout my house, whether it's me or through Ariel. <laughs> You're funny. Well, thanks for that. All right, let's continue on this one. And I think we need to, let me see here. Jake, he's on the background. Can you do me a favor and grab the link from the chat and throw it into the Facebook group too? That way they have it in there. And then I'll, I'll post it up later as well. All right, Randy. So day 30, you see it's spaced. Now it's starting to space 20 days in between, right? And it's a text, simple text says, hey, I forgot to send you this earlier, but it's a link to check out the area, area specific stats. We use Altos. Right. You can certainly use anything else. You can also, if you've got Chime, you can actually use the market research they've got too and put a link there specific to certain areas. Mm. And 
you can just say plug in the city that you want in this in this search. And for those of you that are wondering how the Chime site looks, let me just pop ours up uh, because it loads super fast, number one. And here we go. All right, so here's where we're at. Here's our site, right? And you can go to neighborhoods, right? Or you can go to sell. And if depending on who they are, right? If it's a past client, I probably would send them to sell my home or a specific neighborhood, right? And if I want to be in, in Malibu, I could I could decide what neighborhood I want to be in. Right? This will ask me to log in because I'm using it as an actual client right now. And dude, I changed, you see, I changed this. It's no longer Grogu. I oh, know, I did notice that. I was a little disappointed. I, I was disappointed because I said I changed it, but it really wasn't me. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm just telling you. I know who it was, and he's on the end of this call right now. <laughs> it might be Jake. We'll blame it on Jake. I'm blaming it on Jake. Oh, that's so funny. All right. Well, here on this section, you can choose to put in whatever link you want. Right. Day 60, another voicemail. It could be an email. Day 100. Now you're seeing it's being spaced every 40 days, right? Mm -hmm. And, and here you go. Here's a simple text. I hope you're having a good evening. I was scrolling through my phone and I saw a picture of your home today. I just want to say hello. That's it. Again, staying in front of them, branding yourself as the person that actually cares and thinks back to them. Like if Randy randomly got this and he bought a home with me, he'd be like, oh, cool. That's super nice, dude. Yeah. Or it's been 100 days. That's crazy. Or it's been whatever. Now, day 130, voicemail drop. Day 160, video text, email voicemail, text, right? And here's the thing, Randy, as we're going deeper into this, I want to I want to cement myself as somebody who's giving value as well, not just somebody who's just checking in. So day 250, chances are you've already discovered every possible thing that's wrong with the home at this point, right? You're like, wait, you just bought a home. Are you finding things that you're like, damn it, I missed that. Oh, we need to fix that right dude we just had the biggest storm since i've lived in this new house i walk into my bedroom and i see a wet spot on the ceiling oh dude that's terrible i'm sorry i i just laughed so i didn't cry all right well you can't crawl up there you'll probably break the roof so don't do it hire somebody oh, dude, you gotta get a ladder Oh, so you don't use ladders. There, there's how you get into the roof. That's how you get into the attic. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Uh, all right. So now here, check this out, dude. It'd be like, hey, Randy, I just had one of my clients call me up to ask me for an electrician. If you need anyone, please reach out to me. I have connections. Just reminding you. And then it could prompt and be like, you know what? I did need a gardener. I did need whatever, right? Because we're always looking. I'm looking for somebody and I'm in the real estate business. Yep. So, and then towards the end of this, you see here, day 364, this is why we love the automated feature on Chime, right? Day 364 says, congrats, it's been a year, right? This is just to remind you, but it says, hey, Randy, guess what? With a shocked face, right? You can remove the shocked face. And then two minutes later, I, you know what? I've had people respond in between here with what? right? But they've got to do it pretty quick because I've got two minutes. If they don't, it automatically texts us about a year ago today, you closed on your home. Happy home anniversary, right? And dude, that, that cements me right there. Yep. The ability for us to stay in front of other people and and to remind them, hey, it's been a year and not actually be the one reminding them. That's how you use technology. You use technology to enhance what you should be enhancing and that's relationships. But we don't do that enough, man. People don't still don't have CRMs. No, you're absolutely right. Your CRM should help make you more human to more humans. Like that's one of the favorite phrases I've heard is that, uh, Technology is a megaphone for you to communicate with more human beings, which is why you should personalize it, which is why you should uh, keep your past clients and your sphere of influence in there. The, the, every time I mention this stat, it gives me the heebie-jeebies that only 12% of people use the same realtor, even though 
70 some odd percent said they were they were satisfied with their experience oh, so like, yeah. why is that happening why why are only 12 percent of people using the same realtor again like, yeah that's that's tough man and that's because we do such a bad job of taking care of our people after mm-hmm. so i and i identified that years after i started in the business and so i suffered from that dude jake's been with me for jake how long have you been with me like eight nine years i don't remember nine years he says nine years okay damn so he remembers he was with us when i sucked at following up with past clients too so i've been in the business for 17 years so um we're still we're still working on it and but we know that we need to do better because it brings in a really good chunk of of business for us, whether it's them who are purchasing or somebody that they refer. Like one of our past clients just bought a home in Malibu for 13 million. That's a past client, right? That's dude. And he upgraded, you know, he slowly went up, mm-hmm. which is great. All right. So I want to touch on these, these other things really quick as we're wrapping up one, start using more automation for your past clients. That's important. Number two, make sure that you're retargeting your past clients on Facebook and Instagram. Why? Because you know Facebook still has 2.89 billion monthly active users. That's almost 3 billion. And 70% of the population in the United States are on Facebook. So retarget them, right? Retarget them with your brand. That's extremely, extremely important. And then next, add a personal touch in between, like an actual handwritten letter. Something that you can send out just to say hello and and extend that deeper. You know how many handwritten letters we get? We don't get very many. So they stand out now. It used to be the reverse. Yeah. Oh, when I go through my mail, I the first thing I look for is if there's any handwritten letters. And then I put those to the side because I know I'm going to read those. And then... Mm -hmm. I put 99% of the rest of the trash of the mail in the trash. Well, the first thing I look for are brownies in a box. And then <laughs> I'm, I'm, jo- <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> well, I'm not joking. You're not joking. I'm yeah. not joking. I'm not. <laughs> That's actually the truth. Yeah. You know, you're probably looking for the next Amazon box with whatever gadget you just got. Uh, that's true. That's also true. Damn it. <laughs> that's true also. And then uh, the fourth thing here is, Think about having events, uh, whether they're small events, if you're able to in your areas or virtual events where you can just bring people together uh, and and you have the option of doing both, right? Or meeting people one-on-one that are your past clients just to sit in and listen, right? We've gone through this whole, we've done a webinar just on doing that, where you just call up your past clients, texting them and say, hey, let's catch up, sit down, ask them how they're doing. And you believe if you just shut up, they tell you everything. And then at the end, this is Chris Voss. Chris Voss never split the difference, the book. Yeah. He's saying, look, just, just keep on asking questions in regards to what they just said. Use that last sentence and repeat it to them in the form of a question. And then at the end, they're like, damn, Randy, you're so good at, you know, there's a connection. And they don't know why, right? And all, all you did was just listen and ask questions. Mm-hmm. Right? And then it goes deeper. And I think we, we, over, we overanalyze that and we think we need to ask for business every time. And that's the biggest mistake, right? Because then if you're asking me for business when you're calling me or you're automating the, the texts or the emails, I'm going to stop looking at them. I'm going to stop answering your call because mm-hmm. that's all I get from you. Spam. Take. Yeah. People are just trying to take. Or you can see throughout Tristan's example, he was just giving, giving, giving. And each of you, I mean, was there at any point in that trip we just went through where you asked for business again? The closest uh, closest you got was joking, are you ready to buy another home or something? I do ask for one in one section. I said some of my clients are also looking to invest. Okay. If, you, if you've ever thought about that, let me know because we do have a plan for that. And that's the only time I sell them on it. Okay. I mean, I mean dude. That's very reasonable. And that's, that's pretty much it, Randy. And then 
let me see if I missed anything on this point. And if you have any, if anybody has any questions on that Google Doc, just let me know. I, I see a few of you on there already on Google because I can see who's on. And I'm creating this one, Randy, and then I'll let you go. I'm doing a, a, five, a one to five year plan, right? Oh. So I'm barely outlining it, right? And I'm trying to see what other things we can do because not everybody has chime, unfortunately, right? So I'm yeah. trying to see what other things we can automate through, right? Whether we bring in an ISA, whether we bring in Twilio, right? So um, anyway, that's that's what I'm working on next, but that's going to be a little bit before we get there fully. Let me see if anybody has anything to say. Nope. Randy, anything you got, buddy, to end it besides you pity the fool? <laughs> um no, I'll, I'll simply say this. I was texting back and forth with Brittany Howard the other day, and she was telling me she just put together a past client follow-up video that you can only find in Lab Code Agents Premium. So plug for at Lab Code Agents Premium. Brittany Howard, if you don't know her, she started in real estate and closed online leads overnight. The only person I know to ever have done that. So wow. um, if you're not a Lab Code Premium subscriber you are missing out on gold dude i just put up the link there i didn't plan on that i had to find that <laughs> hey that's thanks thanks randy chime chime in lca there you go yeah i mean what more could you ask for Brittany howard amazing person chime client lca premium contributor thanks randy appreciate it man let's let's expand on this on the automation side i'd love to do another one on on just automation Oh yeah, I mean, we could really get lost in the, the conditional triggers and the conditional questions. You could build this amazing tree of decisions within Chime based off of the way uh, leads respond to different things. So it would yeah. be really interesting to just- I think that, that's the cool thing to see. As they respond, I'd like to maybe bring in Adam Frank to be like, okay, if they respond this way, then they go here. And if they respond yeah. this way, it dumps over here. If you add this tag, I've designed it to do this. I'd love to see that. that is Let's do that. For the, for the geekier side, and we can definitely get Adam to help us out with that. We can call it master of automation or king of automation. Automation kings, something like that. Dude, just your barbecue follow-up. Let's go. Barbecue follow-up. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. <laughs> I appreciate it, dude. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Y'all take it easy.